Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, yeah, so I'll be talking about custom containers uh, in Beam today, um, which is a new-ish feature um, to provide your own uh, SDK harness container image in a portable pipeline. Now, uh, maybe you know what that is already uh, because you've been watching Beam College. Um, but if you don't, uh, we'll quickly go over that. Um, so you've probably seen the slide in many forms during uh, this uh, Beam College. But um, a quick overview of Beam portability uh, is you write a pipeline in any language of your choice. Um, and then Beam takes it and translates it into a form that any runner can understand. Um, and so we have several different SDKs per language and several different types of execution engines or runners uh, that orchestrate the actual running of your pipeline. Um, but today we'll be talking a little less about the building blocks of the pipeline or how to uh, make a pipeline and more about the pipeline execution itself, um, AKA the worker or worker environment that your uh, code runs in. Um, and so this is sort of the basic outline of a pipeline. Um, you, uh, as the, using the SDK client, uh, write your pipeline um, and you submit it. Um, and through the job service, it gets uh, submitted to a runner, which handles the um, details about how workers are spun up or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, for data flow, this is obviously distributed workers um, running in Google Cloud um, with Flink and Spark and other runners like this. Um, you know, these workers are. Uh, from a worker pool you manage or things like that. Um, and so uh, anytime it needs to, this uh, runner needs to run your user code in your pipeline in some language, it delegates to a process called the SDK harness. Um, and so uh, this SDK harness um, is a containerized uh, process that run usually, um, that runs user code in your language. Um, Typically, uh, it's in the past been for one language, but with things like uh, cross language, um, you know, there could be an arbitrary language and um, your runners and workers could also uh, only be understanding one language and sort of uh, delegate uh, understanding parts of your pipeline in another language to the SDK harness. Um, and so uh, the nice thing about this is that because it's typically run as a container, um, all of your code and dependencies are packaged into an image and the SDK is also packaged in there uh, per language. Um, and so this is an isolated hermetic environment that uh, can be spun up in many different ways um, to uh, just run your code. And so it has or installs the things needed to run this code, um, namely language, uh, Python or Java, for example, um, the Beam SDK in that language uh, so that it can take pieces of your pipeline and translate that into um, things that it knows how to run. Um, and then the dependencies that your code relies on. Um, and so there's a design doc uh, written a while back about this actual container contract. Um, so if you want to read it, you can, but uh, it's definitely not necessary for your understanding of how this works. Um, yeah, and so we released default SDK harnesses um, uh, to Docker Hub. Um, these are also cloned to DCR uh, for Dataflow. Um, and so these contain the basic requirements, dependencies per language. Um, and typically what happens is um, uh, when users need more dependencies, like their own code has specific dependencies, um, they either package it into their uh, jar, like in Java or in Python, uh, you um, provide a list of uh, PyPy dependencies or uh, setup py, things like that. Um, and we go ahead and run that using pip. Um, and so this is how we typically install dependencies. Um, but uh, if you want sort of like more control over that, there's not a lot of options. Um, and so um, this is ex uh, especially hard with remote runners where you don't typically control the machines being used to run your pipeline. Um, and local running is less of a concern, obviously, because you control that machine. Um, but, uh, and we also typically uh, include some dependencies on this image that users are more likely to use to save time, like TensorFlow, but uh, only specific versions of it. Um, so typically, if you're using a newer version of TensorFlow or things like that, you have to download it. Um, 
And so um, the custom container, this is like where custom containers comes in. Um, it allows you to build your own container image um, to configure the SDK runtime environment um, and provide it as a pipeline option. Um, and so this allows you to do things like stage any sort of file you want or uh, any large dependencies that you don't want to download all the time. Um, it allows you to run additional setup scripts or installation. Um, and it allows you to do things like set environment variables or just in general configure your environment. Um, and you provide it as a pipeline option. Uh, Dataflow right now, uh, this is considered an in preview feature. Um, so uh, there are still some things being worked out around uh, like official uh, flags and things like that. Um, and currently only being supported for Python portable pipelines, uh, which, which is where this really shines because um, of how Python dependencies are provided. Um, yeah. And so there's a link to the documentation if you wanna uh, reference this for later. Um, but uh, for now, we'll just talk about uh, the basics of custom containers, AKA how to build the image um, and then how to actually run a pipeline using that image. Yeah, uh, and so uh, pretty much uh, I'll be using Docker, uh, but um, if you have some other way of building containers, by all means, um, we'll be talking a little more about um, what you need in your image and less about how to build a container image. As I'm sure you know, there is uh, plenty of documentation about that on the internet. Um, but yeah, uh, so uh, there are a couple options for building an image that um, uh, the worker and the SDK harness um, that work as a worker SDK harness. Um, so the first option is that you base it off an existing image and then you add things if needed. Um, and so this uh, example shows using the default images that we released to DCR or Beam. Um, so this is using the Beam Python uh, SDK image. Um, I realize there's actually a period missing there. Um, it's supposed to be 3.7, um, but yeah, uh, this is using the 2.27 image because that's when I wrote this presentation, <laughs> um, but uh, you can change this to be any version you need. Um, and so, you know, you can do things like copy in files or set an environment variable. Um, you can run, uh, app get or any sort of installation you need. Um, you can run arbitrary scripts here. Um, sorry, my neighbor's dog. Um, and then, you know, you just use Docker build to actually build this image. Um, and so this is like sort of the most basic thing, which is um, essentially using uh, the existing default images and uh, uh, just adding a couple things on top. Um, Sort of a variant on this is what we call a multi-stage build, which is um, maybe you want more control over your image. Um, maybe you already have a pre-existing image and you just want it to be able to be used as an SDK harness image. Um, and so this sort of describes uh, using two different images as base images. Um, so for example, let's say you have my base image as your own image, holding for dog, maybe. <laughs> um, uh, and so this basically um, actually installs uh, Apache Beam SDK, um, and then it copies from the existing uh, default image uh, for Beam Python 3.6 SDK um, version 2.28, um, and it copies over all of the dependencies that already exist on that image. Um, yeah. Uh, and then finally, what it does is it sets the entry point to the Apache Beam SDK launcher. Um, the entry point is basically what actually launches the container process. Um, so uh, this is what actually needs to run. Um, and it's probably the most essential part of the image. Um, and it basically actually runs the SDK process. Um, yeah, um, and so last option here, obviously, um, Beam is open source. So all of this code is uh, like the Docker files and uh, all of our code is open source. So you are always welcome to check out a stable branch of the of Beam, um, edit the Docker file. Um, there's the uh, link to the Python one here, but um, we also have some for the other language SDKs. 
Um, and then you just build the image using um, Gradle, which is our build system. Uh, I obviously uh, don't recommend this if uh, you aren't willing to get into the nitty gritty of Beam um, development. Um, uh, the development environment is a lot to set up because there are so many languages. Um, but uh, you know, if there is something that you really want to do, like for example, um, our entry point is a Go binary that um, uh, we release uh, or we build and release uh, specifically only for one sort of OS. So um, uh, if you really need, you know, a different build of that Go binary. For example, uh, this is where uh, you might want to check out and uh, build a from source. Yeah, um, and so the important bits of all of this is that uh, your language has, or your image has the base language. Um, so for example, Python um, has the SDK requirements um, in the default images. This is uh, all in uh, this folder, um, opt Apache Beam. Um, and so this includes, um, you also want to install the SDK um, and all of its required dependencies. Um, and finally, uh, the boot script, uh, which is a Go binary um, that uh, we also put into Optipache Beam. Um, and so uh, this uh, handles things like provisioning and artifact initialization. So, um, you know, downloading any files that you've listed as like, um, files uh, to get um, and actually launching the SDK or worker process. Uh, yeah. So let's actually talk about how to use this now. Uh, the prerequisite here um, is that you have um, your runners and workers have Docker installed. Um, uh, our Beam relies on Docker as a container runtime. Um, and so uh, this is just sort of a requirement that we have for now. Um, for local runners, um, make sure that your image is loaded or loadable in the Docker daemon, aka it can be pulled. Um, and for remote runner and workers, same thing. Uh, make sure that they can uh, pull this image using Docker. Um, Workers might need credentials for this. Um, uh, for example, um, with Dataflow, uh, your VMs, uh, the default service account will need uh, access to uh, the image um, if you are hosting it, for example, in Google Cloud, in GCR, or things like that. Um, typically, if it is the same project, you don't actually need to set this up yourself. But if you're doing some uh, cross-project things like that, um, that's something to be aware about. Yeah, um, and so Dataflow Runner, this is the example. Um, uh, I'm mostly gonna be talking about remote runners just because this is where it's uh, the most useful. Um, uh, Dataflow Runner, um, you uh, specify that it's a portable pipeline. Um, so that's use runner v2. Um, and then you specify a, a worker harness container image. Um, we also are um, switching possibly to using a more accurate term. This is sort of like a non-portable pipeline uh, uh, reference. Um, so uh, this basically says uh, use this SDK harness image, um, uh, which is you know some image that you've built and pushed um, to a remote uh, container registry. Um, Testing locally, um, pretty much uh, the same, uh, but adding in uh, specific flags for using custom containers. Um, so uh, you specify the environment type, which is uh, you want it to be running using Docker, uh, and then you specify the image as part of environment config. Um, there are a couple of other flags, I think, that have been added recently um, to specify an image. Um, but uh, that should all be documented um, on the portable runner, uh, but these will still work. Um, uh, and so Flink and Spark and things that sort of use the same portable environment actually just use the same uh, uh, flags. Um, an important thing to note here is that when you do run it in Docker, um, currently, um, and when you are running it on your local Docker, 
currently the spins up container. Um, and so anything written um, and anything read has to be on that container file system. Um, we're working on improvements on uh, testing in a local environment um, and hopefully we'll be able to do things like allow you to mount files, local file systems to the container file system and things like that. Um, but for now, just be sort of aware that uh, anything you do output is actually output to the container and thus will disappear when you uh, stop running the container. Um, and vice versa, anything that's an input file, if it's not a remote file, has to be um, accessed uh, locally on the container. Yeah, so uh, why don't we move on to the demo portion? So uh, I prepared a quick demo. Um, I'm gonna start with Dataflow. Um, as I mentioned, this is sort of where it shines, I guess. Um, and uh, I'll be going over um, like a custom image that I'll build and then um, running it on Dataflow. Um, and then if we have some time, I'll go over uh, what it looks like um, on the portable runner. Um, so uh, here I have a Docker file. Um, so uh, in this Docker file, we are just uh, using the base image. Um, I'll provide the Beam version as a, uh, a argument to Docker build. Um, we have an environment variable. I'm gonna set it right now to Beam College header, um, and I'll show you sort of where this appears later. Um, and then I have a custom package that I wrote that uh, is a useless demo package. Um, and so what this does is um, it's sort of just built on top of word count, but um, based on the count of a word, we'll add some sparkles. Um, and then another thing, uh, I wrote a very shoddily uh, written uh, text thing just so that it displays nicely in uh, GCR. That's it. <laughs> um, um, or sorry, uh, in Google Cloud Storage. Um, and so uh, this is sort of like to represent any sort of custom uh, Python package you might want to write or you know any sort of uh, strange dependency that you need to include on your image. Um, yeah, uh, this is specifically for local testing, but um, I have a copy of King Lear um, that we copy into the image. Um, and finally, um, I'm going to be using uh, GMPY2, uh, which is a uh, sort of just fast math library. Um, and so uh, it requires a couple of you know uh, specific uh, dependencies. And so um, typically you would have to do something like run a specific set of py that called out to apt get. Um, but with a custom container image, you can just run the dependence or run the dependency install um, right now. Um, and so this Installs that installs that dependency um, and then installs a preloaded package uh, that I mentioned. Yeah, um, and then um, my demo pipeline is essentially word count uh, with extra steps. Um, I also have it uh, logging to info right now. Um, this is mostly for uh, local testing, actually, as I mentioned, uh, outputting to a file that then disappears probably doesn't tell you much about what your pipeline is actually doing, um, but it's pretty easy to add some logging steps. Um, yeah, um, and finally, I have a demo script. Um, this is mostly actually for anyone who wanted to look at the code. Um, I'm gonna be working off this hard-coded script uh, just because, um, just in case like my environment variables weren't working properly during the demo. Let's not Maybe. injure the demo god. Sorry, uh, could you zoom in a bit? It's just that the oh, yeah, font yeah. is a bit too small. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's enough. That's great. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm currently in this folder. Um, and so, uh, sort of the thing that I already did um, before this, um, I, I'm using a virtual environment just because. Python. Um, I installed the SDK and I installed my custom library. Um, and so I'm going to build my image. Um, I'm using 2.28 as my version because that's the most recent version. Um, and I'm tagging it uh, and I'm going to be pushing it to GCR. Um, as you might realize, I work at Google. <laughs> so yeah, 
Um, and so this will build. Um, uh, uh, yeah, um, and so as this builds, I'll sort of talk about what we'll do. Um, um, after this, I'll push it to GCR um, and then I'll run it on Dataflow and I'll sort of go over how to debug it in Dataflow just because um, that's probably the more interesting part of like actually running it on Dataflow. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I should mention that these images are quite large um, right now. And this is actually particularly because our base image includes a lot of dependencies so that you uh, don't have to install them um, right away. Um, and so this includes things like TensorFlow, which is quite large. Um, but um, as part of uh, this rollout of custom containers, we're thinking of basically uh, reducing the initial size of the image. Um, and so if you need things like TensorFlow, you can use uh, like a image that, like a Uber image, um, if you would, uh, to borrow from Java terms that um, has more of the dependencies, or you can choose to use like a minimal image if you don't really need the dependencies that are built in. Yeah, um, so we've pushed our image. Um, and let's see. Uh, nope, that's not right. Whoop. I forgot I had to do this. Okay, we're good. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and uh, uh, use this image now in a uh, data flow pipeline. Um, so uh, basically a uh, couple things to note, um, the input is a remote file uh, just because of data flow um, and I'm outputting it to a GCS bucket. Um, same thing with uh, my temp location. Um, yeah, and so these two are really the important flags here where I'm providing my custom image as the worker harness container image. Yeah, um, so it looks like it's starting to run. Um, and why don't we go to data flow? It's uh, uploading my stuff, so. Emily, in the meantime, mm -hmm. sorry to, to distract you. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. In the meantime, while that's running, we have a question from Dan asking if you need to specify an entry point in your Docker build. Uh, yes. Um, well, uh, if you don't want to override it um, and you're using the base image, then no. Um, if you want to override it, then yes. Um, so for example, if you're using a different base image, um, or if you're building it from scratch or things like that, uh, then you do need to, at the very least, um, run this uh, Go binary that we've provided as uh, the like long lasting container process, if that makes sense. Um, okay, yes, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Oh yeah, yeah, no worries. I mean, this is uh, clearly uh, the boring part of the presentation. Oh. Just on that. Yeah, um, and so this is our pipeline running. Um, yeah, um, and my worker logs, um, as it runs, it should. Yeah, um, and so you, as you can see, uh, if you need to like check on your job during uh, the running of this, uh, you can go ahead and look at um, things like this. Um, and so it'll show up in the options. Just making sure that uh, it matches. Yeah. So um, this should start running. Um, and we'll sort of, um, we can actually maybe just uh, in a separate window, um, uh, run the local runner. Um, 
so in a local runner, um, pretty much the same thing. Um, well, that's because I haven't activated my environment. That makes sense. Um, Uh, and so pretty much the same thing. Um, uh, this is essentially running the same thing, um, but uh, basically it's a good way to uh, test your uh, um, container to make sure that it can be pulled and run locally. Um, and so this is like, um, not necessarily something that you want to do. Um, just there's uh, ways to run it using direct runner or things like that. Um, but uh, essentially, a way to uh, make sure that uh, your container can be pulled um, and works relatively well with your pipeline. Um, there are just a couple of like sort of things that you might need to uh, temporarily do for local testing, uh, aka a credential access or things like that. Yeah, um, and it looks like our job is finishing up. Um, yeah, um, and so as you can see, this is sort of my debug line that output all of the uh, word counts. Um, and so basically based on whether the number was prime or uh, one, um, just added some different you know, code characters. Um, and so um, uh, the final thing that it did was uh, uh, write to a file. So here's our thing. Um, and so uh, as you can see, um, did I provide the right tag? Unclear. Um, Oh, I didn't save. Well, um, in any case, uh, so um, basically what this does is um, it uses the environment variable that you've set in the image uh, to provide um, the header here. Um, and so uh, essentially what that does is um, it allows you to use the, you can see that the environment variable has been set on the container um, and uh, has been used in our pipeline. Um, and so this obviously is not like uh, something that you might do in production, but uh, for anything that might require environment variable or things like that, um, you can set it prior um, in your custom container and it should be uh, fine to use um, in your pipeline code. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're actually, pretty good on time. I might have spoken a little faster than I thought I would. Um, but yeah, so um, I'll go back to the presentation right now. Um, oh, another thing actually, before I do that, um, before I go back, um, a good thing to check on um, if you have issues with your um, container uh, is just to go into your uh, logs here. Um, and so we have a couple of like metrics set up um, for things like uh, Docker um, or Kubelet. Uh, and those should tell you if uh, for anything particularly about actually running the container itself. Um, and then worker logs obviously show you um, things about uh, the worker logs. Um, so that's sort of like if you have trouble with actually debugging your pipeline itself, those are uh, good places to go. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, uh, so things to keep in mind when you do this, um, make sure that your SDK type and version matches. Um, typically, it will be fairly obvious if you have a mismatched version of Python or things like that, because it will uh, throw an OS error or something very quickly and stop. Um, 
Beam SDK versions might not matter as much. Um, mostly if there is like an incompatible change, um, that might matter. Um, but typically what happens is when you run the SDK using a specific client version, it will make sure that your pipeline is actually running that version. And so it will actually go and download it, which does defeat the purpose a little bit of the custom container in that case, because you know the SDK takes time to download. Yeah. Um, oh, an another thing is also to make sure that your SDK type actually matches, um, aka don't use uh, the Python SDK uh, on a Java pipeline or vice versa. Um, unless you're using cross-language, cross then by all means. Um, but yeah, um, another sort of thing. Um, so the local runner, um, as I mentioned, the container behavior um, is a little weird uh, just to uh, let you know and to warn you about the behavior there. Um, but all the file systems are local to the container and it doesn't have the same um, access to environment variables or things like that. Um, so other options, um, if you don't want to install Docker, um, uh, oftentimes Docker has to run as root. So maybe you don't want that. Um, so you can build your image using other um, things. Um, some examples are like Kaneko or uh, Google Cloud Build um, or whatever cloud provider um, alternative that you'd like to use. Um, just um, basically making sure that you don't have to uh, install Docker on your development machine. Um, and finally, a thing to consider is if you're using Docker Hub to host your images, um, uh, be aware that um, Anonymous users um, typically only get 100 pulls per six hours. Um, and right now, a lot of our remote runners don't provide the ability to provide like a Docker credential or things like that. Um, and so we're limited to 100 pulls per six hours, um, which um, might not be an issue, but depending on how big your pipeline is or things like that, um, it's something to consider. Um, and so sort of the next steps here are um, adding usability features for simple container builds. Um, so um, hopefully um, for simple things like adding new files or uh, just setting one environment variable, something like that, uh, you'll never have to actually touch a Docker file or Docker, we'll just um, pre-run it for you. Um, and then improvements to uh, local container testing. Um, as I mentioned, there are some things that we can do to actually uh, mount file systems or uh, pass in credentials uh, as needed to Docker. Um, and so, uh, yeah. And then um, in Dataflow, we're uh, hoping to uh, launch this officially once we nail down the usability and make sure that everything is working great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's my talk. Um, if you need to read more about this, there's the documentation. Um, Feel free, obviously, to get in touch with the Beam community um, and the Beam development team um, at that link. Yeah. Um, and so I see that there are some questions lined up already. Um, I'll just move straight into those. Um, when using custom containers, are there any consideration scotches as it relates to GCP IM policies? Uh, so in general, um, there shouldn't be any new ones. Um, so typically the container image should pretty much work the same. Um, and so it has uh, the ability to use the, um, the GCE, uh, I forgot exactly what they're called, like implicit credentials basically that uh, the GCE VMs have access to. So um, this is basically the default service account on the VM. Um, and so this is obtained through like via metadata, things like that. Um, and so uh, so anything that you can do right now with a pipeline with the default container image should work fine uh, with the custom container image. Um, 